Community Shop Health Foundation. And what we do is partner with salons so that they can actually become resource centers, provide free health screenings and services to their customers. Because where else do women go and everybody goes is to where? <laughs> the hairdresser, the beauty shop, right? And so you make new friends and your, ther your um, stylist becomes like your therapist sometimes. You know, there was a young girl that had a great family life, um, great dad, great mom. Um, everything was going wonderful. And then all of a sudden, mom got sick. And nobody knew what it was. And now I think they call it postpartum depression. And back in the 70s, you know, women were just put into mental institutions because nobody knew what it was. And so mom was in and out of the hospital all the time. Um, the youngest baby, who was five years from the three, actually um, went through a lot. And when mom got sick, she started telling, especially the girls, that they weren't going to be anything. Nobody was going to love them. You know, they weren't going to be worth anything. And so imagine being told that by your mom from the time you were 11 years old all the way up most of your life. So the young girl went on. She had a wonderful dad and actually did very well. Ended up going to Johnson Publishing Company and working for John H. Johnson, which was at the time the richest black man in America for Ebony and Jack. She was a model and did a lot of things. And all of a sudden at 27, she broke her boyfriend, broke up with her. She got a promotion from the job. Her mom was sick again and she was calling all the time and saying these things. And this young girl just went through a period of just crying really for almost a whole month. So you could say anything and she would just bust out crying and just cry. And luckily this young lady had a sister circle of um, ladies that said, baby, you need to get some help. But you know in our community, it's like, oh baby, get over it, it'll be okay. And so the young lady remembers calling her dad and saying, dad, I think I'm getting sick. And he said, baby, I can't help you. You need to quit your job and come home so we can take care of you. But this young girl was the only one that moved away from home, was in the big city, was doing good, and did not want to let her dad down. And so she went to see a therapist. And you know, that therapist saved her life. Because a lot of times you think that when you're, you cry a lot or emotional, it's because you're weak. Um, sometimes you just need somebody to listen to you not necessarily tell you what to do, but to help you get into your own mind to understand why. See, you never was gonna be nothing. Nobody ever was gonna love you. And so it's just like things just coming and coming and coming and coming. And so imagine her just crying every day. And so after she got help, she realized, wow, the therapist said, you're so weak from being emotional. It's good to share your emotions. You have to understand and also learn that your mom was sick. You know, it is a disease, and people that have mental illness usually hurt the people that's the closest to them, because those are the ones that know the most about them. And so this young lady went on, started the Black Beauty Shop Health Foundation, has gone on to seven different cities, developed relationships with beauty shops. But just because you go through something is not who you are. And having a sister circle, and not people to just tell you what to do, but sometimes you just need somebody to listen. And if you need to cry, cry. You know, go to the beach and learn how to love yourself. And that it is, maybe we can look at being self-aware and being able to acknowledge where and when we need support as a strength, right? And so instead of saying it is, it is something that is it's okay, okay to, to ask not be help. strong. Uh -huh. It's okay to say, I am self-aware enough to say, this is not working for me, right. uh -huh. and I need support here. Yeah, that is a strength. Yeah. So when we can reframe that and understand that that is, that is also another way we can be strong, because it is important for us to be strong. And opt to look like spa days and brunch and candles and <laughs> stuff like that.
all of that. It's so Spending so the money so you don't have. Exactly, which is not self-care, by the Thank you. It is just long-term stress, and now you're trying to pay off. Thank you. And one day, if you're still paying on that, that ain't self-care. What I want to say about that, though, is that we get to simplify that whole idea, and sometimes self-care is just saying no. <laughs> saying no to something you don't want to do, to somewhere you don't want to go, to somebody you don't want to be bothered with. Sometimes self-care, and that don't cost you nothing. Ain't going to be no interest on that. So I want to say, like, boundaries. Oftentimes, on the circumstance, she told the story of her mom saying things to her, and then circumstances, her boyfriend broke up with her. Things are happening around us that cause us to feel and respond in a certain way, and uh, we need to be able to know that oftentimes when we're experiencing sadness, hurt, pain, challenge, whatever, that it is in response to a trigger or a stimulus. It is necessary, it is appropriate, and it is okay to ask for help because emotions are not demotions. They do not make you less than you are or should be because you're feeling a particular way today or any other day. One thing that's very true of our society is that we have a very me-centered approach to, to life and the way we engage with folks. But for black women, and really for black communities, but for black women in particular, we take on this tend and befriend approach. Mm -hmm. We are going to take care of things. Mm -hmm. We are going to look after other people. Yes. We have become very accustomed to that. It's, it is a part of our, our, our rich, deep African roots and history, but we have taken it to a place that has become a challenge for us. Yes. And so, I, you know, when we're, when we're meeting women and I'm talking to people and I tell them, I say, you know, there's this song that, you know how you can love a song, but at the same time it frustrates you? <laughs> <laughs> and Audra Day, she says it. She says, and I'll rise up, yeah. and I'll yeah. rise like the day, and I'll rise up. Oh, sing Diva. And I'll rise unafraid, and I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. That's too much. Thank you. Thank you. It really comes down to stigma. Mm -hmm. um, in our community, uh, it's not looked upon favorably if yeah. you are seeking traditional mental health services. That. And that is really rooted in the historical mm -hmm. sort of settings that we found ourselves in, um, really sort of being criminalized in a lot of ways. And then also not being recognized as human beings ah. right? to begin with, I mean, from the beginning. And so if you're not recognized as human beings, then you don't deserve to have any level of treatment, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then you carry those traumas with you, as someone said, generationally. And you internalize those messages. Um, and so you're, we're not always thinking about the traditional sort of medicine and the availability of services um, in our community. And part of that is also that we don't trust the healthcare system. Oh, right? Right. And I work for a healthcare system. And that mistrust of the healthcare system um, is really rooted in a lot of the experimentation that was done on black bodies. That's right. And whether we're talking about the Tuskegee experiment, whether we're talking about, um, you know, Henrietta Lacks, right? Thank you. Do you all know who Henrietta Lacks is? There you go. So we're talking, you know, and, and we have numerous examples. I think people default to Tuskegee. But there are numerous examples in which black bodies have been experimented on. Sterilization is another uh, method in which people were um, experimented on. And so we will hide it, right? Because then if you look at the research, people also think about um, how does this affect my employment, right? Like if I go and I'm saying like, oh, I'm getting mental health treatment, then at some point that might be questionable. Am I capable of functioning on a job? There are so many issues, and I think um, we can't blame ourselves for the reasons why we, we hide it. It might be rooted in some truth, but we do have to start to peel away the layers. That's right. That's Charles Drew involved in raising the awareness around mental health. 
Well, you know, for a lot of people, some people in the community aren't even aware of the history of Drew. So Drew has been around since 1966, grew out of the Watts Rebellion, where some black physicians got together and incorporated, became a postgraduate medical institution. Then when King Hospital opened in 72, with a partnership with LA County Health Department, we became the education and research arm uh, of the hospital for all those years, and a research and training arm and community service. So Drew is the only major academic uh, institution in, in South LA that for years has dealt with the numerous health disparities that impact uh, not only African Americans, but other people of color communities, including uh, depression. So I work in the area of uh, HIV and AIDS for the last almost 40 something years. So people living with HIV and AIDS, they experience a lot of mental health issues. So we've had programs for close to 30 something years working not only with people living with HIV and AIDS who are experiencing depression, but with their family members. So we are uh, a much needed resource in the community. We have teams of clinicians uh, and researchers who want to bring down some of these rates of mental, mental health issues in our community. So we're just glad to be at the table with our partners in the Mindful Beauty Project. Always take the time to think about a time in your life when you felt the most confident, uh, when you felt so good about yourself and you didn't care about what anybody else thought. And think about what you were doing at that time and channeling on that education and you felt good about learning or just whatever it was that made you feel or feel like feel or look good about yourself. And take that time and channel that because that is what's going to motivate you to want to develop into the next phase in your life. All right, when it comes to unhappy people, what are the number one thing that unhappy people are really, really good at doing? Making money. Well, that's right. Unhappy people are very good at making sure that everybody else is unhappy. Now, they say that you have got to get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and they love what you see. Thank you. You've got to be able to get up in the morning look in the mirror and love what you see. What if you don't? So we're talking about mental awareness, mental health awareness. You know, there's something that I say all the time, and that is sometimes you need to get a checkup from the neck up. A checkup from the neck up because there are moments there are times there are seasons in our lives when we just don't feel right and sometimes it's a moderate feeling you can you feel it in the morning you're done by the end of the day sometimes you feel it in the morning lasts a little bit long sometimes you get like the young woman that margo was talking about and she realized this feeling has not gone away. But she did something that was very important when she realized she did not love what she saw in the mirror because she could not see through the tears. She asked for help. I hope you learn today that you do not have to be strong all the time. You do not have to carry everybody's burden all the time. Erica Badu had that song, Bad Lady. You're gonna be left behind carrying and dragging all them bags around. You need to put those burdens down. Put those bags down. Quit carrying around generations of pain. 
generations of pain, and we are acting like it's all right. It is not all right, and you would be relieved at how good you might feel if you put your burden down. Yes. If you stop packing your bag so heavy that you can't carry it. Absolutely. And then you take the bag off your shoulder and give it to your daughter. Say, you carry it now. Your daughter takes it and she gives it to her daughter, her son. You carry it now. Why do we carry on? There is nothing wrong with saying, you know what, let me stay down here for a minute. Let me stay right here grounded so I can get strong to carry on again. There's nothing wrong with that. Another thing we do, we want to cover it all up. We want to cover it up. Like if you buy some new hair, if you buy a new lipstick, if you buy a new dress, if you buy a bag you can't afford, I've done that once. <laughs> That's gonna make it all better. It's not. I, she knows you gotta go to work because you gotta make the money so you can get your hair done and your nails did. You know you gotta go to work to do that so you can get that latte, okay? Which, by the way, you all, start making coffee at home. It is far more cost effective and will taste better. Well, we know you gotta work to afford all of these things. But if you're getting up every morning, going to work with people you don't like, who make you feel uncomfortable, who the moment you hit the door at work, you in a bad attitude. I would say to you, get another job. Get another job. Because what happens is people are dumping their garbage on you. And then you, who may be susceptible to popping off. <laughs> Pop off! And then you got two people popping off. And that's when shit happens. <laughs> Make some basic, better change. Find your words. Speak up and ask for help. help. If one of you is no longer here because your life is over, everything will change for a lot of people, whether you know it or not. You are far more valuable than you are telling yourself. Self-care is knowing that self matters. And in this room, at this time, because I'm watching you, if you feel you need to cry, if you feel you need to let it out, let it out! Yes! Go ahead. You are not alone. You are not alone.